Hey everybody, Larry Lawton here. I got a really good video for you today. You know, it's about the Chiefs aholic fan who was caught as a bank robber. But before I get started, let's please check me out on Patreon, YouTube, member programs, Discord, uh, merch, my book, Gangster Redemption. Still going crazy good. People love it and as they should. The book shows a lot. It really opens up people's eyes to a lot of things and I think that's important, you know. So let me get right into this whole entire uh, uh, video is going to be about fans, uh, crazy fans. Maybe they do some crazy shit, but do they bounce back? Do they uh, become a success? What happens to them afterwards? Well, because there's one I want to highlight, but we, we you know, we, we're talking about this because it came up at the end of the year here. Uh, a mega Chiefs fan, he walked around in a wolf outfit and all that, and he's called the Chiefs super fan. He was arrested in Oklahoma and charged with armed bank robbery. He was actually robbing the banks to pay for the season tickets and the travel to go to all the Chiefs games. And here's the thing. See, he didn't show up at a, a Tennessee, a Kansas City game against Tennessee. When that didn't happen, people started going, what's going on? Where is he? Uh, um, I was wrong. It was the Houston Texans I'm looking. He, he shouldn't show up against the Houston Texas uh, game against the Chiefs. And people wonder, where is this guy? So they started looking for him in hospitals. They find him in prison in Oklahoma. His name is Xavier Babuder. Xavier Babuder. He's a super fan, obviously. Anybody who gets dressed up in those outfits and goes to every game and no matter what. I mean, listen, it's not a bad hobby. If you can afford it and it's the right thing to do and you love your sport and you love your team. Obviously, listen, I'm not hating this guy at all. Should you be robbing a bank to pay for this? Absolutely not. But you know, anybody who's that zealous of a fan, you got to give them a little thumbs up, man. I don't give a fuck what you tell me. If you're willing to rob a bank to fucking go to a sports game, I mean, that's pretty big shit right there. I mean, it really is. He robbed the Tulsa Credit Union in, in a town earlier that morning. And uh, he was also, according to police reports, but Booter's bond was set at $200,000. That's pretty high. Uh, even for bank robbers in the United States now. Uh, but this man was the guy you see out there. He's got the wolf out, uh, the wolf mask, and he went crazy. And, uh, you know, every one of them have fans like that. I mean, every game. And, you know, especially when you get to Kansas City and places like that, when you go, just I'm, I'm sitting here thinking about him robbing a bank. Obviously, there, there was a rumor that he was using the same mask in the bank robberies as he did on the field. And that's not true. That's been debunked. So don't believe that. Uh, believe that he is arrested. Believe that he has a $200,000 bond. And it is a bank robbery. It is a federal charge. And I can guarantee you they are going through him, his travel itinerary like you wouldn't believe. Finding out any unsolved uh, uh, robberies, maybe not just of a bank, but probably a credit union bank of something like that. And they're going to look at every area he was in. Any unsolved uh, robberies, they're going to uh, look to... Either see if he did it or, you know, if there's a connection anyway. You know, when I got arrested, they did the same thing. I mean, every every jewelry robbery in the country, they would check him out. And uh, obviously, it's not like they did that anyway. But, you know, the Chiefs, Kansas City Chiefs, and their number one fan, Xavier Babuder, is he's sidelined. So Mahomes and company have to get to the playoffs without him. Uh, and will they? I don't know. You know, I I wouldn't be surprised if there's a spook, spooky fan, a, a, a rich guy who has, you know, believes in voodoo shit or fucking believes in certain luck. Says, we got to have this guy at the games. We got to have him. We, can't, we could lose. And they bail him out. I'd love to see him bail him out. I'd love to bail him out. And I'd love to see him go to a game. I'd love to see him be in that outfit as well. And I don't want somebody else to get in that outfit. I want him to get in that outfit. I think it'd be cool as shit if he did that. I really do. I think it'd be fucking cool as shit. Now, I don't know what you guys believe, but I, I think it'd be really cool. Uh, the reason I also wanted to mention about mascots, mascots that can make good as well. Now, I'm going to give this Xavier Buddha. You know, I don't hate him, of course. He robbed the bank with the fuck uh, uh, I, I'm not saying he's right because he's not. We all know that, guys. But he's making mistakes. He's fucking deep 
deep into this fucking team and he's fucking let him take over his life. And again, I'm not making excuses for him. He has to be held accountable. That is all well and good. But this man doesn't need to have his whole life thrown away. I don't believe so. I mean, uh, besides that, I don't think he was doing anything crazy. Doesn't seem like it. His picture, I hate to say looks normal. How do you know from a picture? Uh, He was just, he got fucking caught up in a whole moment. He wanted to keep doing it and do it and do it. And then I hope they give him a sense as commensurate with what he did. He didn't hurt anybody in these robberies at all. And uh, so let's see what happens. And the reason I'm saying that, because his life is not over. And I'll tell you why it's not over. I know a, a, a person, and I want you to look him up, and I'm going to show the video right here. This is what they who they call the Gorilla Man. Now, the Gorilla Man is well-known in Iowa. The University of Iowa, he is a fucking, he, he would go, <laughs> this guy was fucking nuts. I love the guy. He uh, would go in a gorilla suit, and one time he ran on the field, picked up the football, and ran for a touchdown the other way. Of course, they come and tackle him and all that shit. And he gets suspended from ever going to a game like that again. But he's the Gorilla Man. Everybody knows it. It was on national TV, did everything. And I mean, you could show him here. You could look him up again if you want on YouTube. But he's right here. I'm going to show a little quick clip. Also, he goes in basketball. This is a great one. He's in his Gorilla outfit. And he fucking... Now, he's a college student. He steals the basketball from a player. Runs down court. His friend gets on his knees. He jumps on his back, you know, on, on, on his back, like, and tries to dunk the ball. And he fucking misses the dunk. But what a fucking character this guy is, right? So they call him the Gorilla Man. He's a very, you know, I, I, I hate to say an, a mascot. He wasn't an official mascot of Iowa. Uh, they had a hawk eyes. So it, I guess it's a fucking bird. And then uh, the, I think it's Iowa State's the Cyclones, so that that's not it. But anyway, he's the Gorilla Man, so he's known. And what I was getting at is he made crazy choices as a young man. Let me tell you what the man is doing today. And I'll give his name. The man's name is Joe Sample. He actually has a uh, – he's very big in Iowa. He's a, he's a social media influencer in Iowa. And he actually helped people through the – COVID pandemic in a very big way. Let me explain what he did because I highlighted him here. He came up with a slogan, be like Joe. What Joe used to do during the pandemic is he would go and use his platform and tell everybody in the world he's at this restaurant and he's eating and these people need help and or they're going to go out of business. And he would give a review of the restaurant and he would bring his whole social platform behind that restaurant. And believe it or not, he saved restaurants. That's right from the owner's mouth. He saved restaurants from going under during the, the pandemic. Uh, what what a heroic, uh, what a change of a person. And, you know, that's just because he was a dumb kid when he was a kid. And I, I love that he did that. I love that he did that. But look what his heart's at. Look where his heart's at. Obviously, you're seeing somebody whose heart was in the University of Iowa. He wanted to do whatever it is in Iowa in any way he can. And yes, is he a conformist? No. Are we all conformists? No. So just because we don't go with what everybody else goes with, don't look down on people, please. This guy, Joe, was a fucking wild high school, uh, college young man. Today, I know he's a, a works with a roofing company and he uh, likes sales or whatever it is. And he's very big in that company, very good at what he does. He's in his mid to late 40s, he's in his late 40s now. He came up with Be Like Joe and he has, has turned a crazy act as a young person like this guy did. And I'm just calling what it is. Made it into something positive. Helping people keep their businesses during COVID. The worst time in this fucking country since my uh, being around where we didn't know what the fuck was going on. Anyway, so Joe Sample, you're a hero. You you had fun when you were in college. You did your thing. Yes, it was sports. And I only related it to this guy, Xavier Babuder, because you're both fanatics for sports, period. You're both fanatics for sports. And I think this guy, Xavier Babuda, could turn his life around and, and become something positive for it, like I did. Uh, I hope I show everybody that you can change. 
anybody can change. I really mean that. I hope everybody sees that. I really believe you can. You know, it's the holiday season right now. And I'm going to be doing a video for Christmas on some cards that I got and stuff like that and and how it was in Christmas in prison. But I'm going to keep this really in a positive way. I love to connect with people during uh, because of the YouTube, and that's how it all started. And, you know, during this holiday season, I was out at breakfast, and I, and I, and I gave a, a person a very big tip. And uh, I'll tell you what they did that really opened my eyes and, and made me really enjoy people. And I am not a wealthy man by any stretch of the imagination. But when I have something, I try to give it away. That, that's just the way I am. That's wrong, right, or indifferent. It is who I am. I was like that when I was a robber. A uh, gangster, and I was always giving things away and stuff, and and throwing parties because I like to. What can I say? Share the wealth. Well, I went to a Denny's, and I was with another person, and uh, this lady was. It was late, and this lady really just showed her smile, her face. And this just happened a day ago. She was really, really a nice woman, and so it was just a two two bill. We had a I don't know thirty eight dollar bill, whatever it is. I said I'm gonna make her day. I paid the $38 and I gave her a $100 tip. And I'm not saying that to be a big shot because I'm not even close to being a big shot. But you know what she did that really made my heart warm about everything about life and about this Christmas? She asked me, do you mind if I give half this tip to the cook? I said, baby, this is your tip. You do whatever you want with it. You got a beautiful heart. And she did. And they both thanked me. And here it is late at night on a, uh, uh, you know, one of those Denny runs. And it, it was just nice to see a very happy, smiling people on just getting a tip. And uh, I, I think that's really powerful. I really, really do. Uh, I'm very happy that it happened that way. And uh, I, I like to do that more. But you guys don't know. If you do know, you're going to see a video on it. If you look at my podcast and if you follow my podcast every year, I also do a uh, a free speaking to a high school or a group or an organization for totally free. Uh, if I can go there, I will even go there on my dime. This year, I couldn't logistically go to uh, Illinois. But one of the students reached out to me. You know, it took a shot. And, and you know, Mr. Lawton, you know, we, we're doing a project on rehabilitate you know criminal justice and how we would change the prisons and stuff is there any way you'd you know like to join us or come or do something of that nature and 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 i did better i i was part of it i spoke and the principal was there i don't know if the superintendent was there but the principal was there and maybe the mayor was there there was a lady named kelly torres who's the teacher of the class what a, what a rock star i mean and and i see why you know teachers are so important and why we need to pay them we need to pay cops and teachers Let's face it, cops and teachers need to get paid. I don't care what you fucking think out there. Cops and teachers need to be paid. That's the safety and the fucking future of our whole entire society on what we can teach them. So I don't think that doesn't matter. And this Kelly Torres is a rock star. And her and I worked dil diligently even over the weekend to get this program right. And it, I think it was a big success. I taped my end of it. Uh, they had some legality issues with kids and work and all this bullshit that most of the shit goes on with colleges and schools and not colleges as much as schools. You know, nobody's, everybody's scared. They don't want to pull a trigger. Get it to a degree, but I also say that's how you lose good people. That's how you lose good speakers. That's how you lose good uh, educators, period. I, I often think Stand By Me with uh, uh, Morgan Freeman as the principal. That's, that's just the movie I look at when I look at principals and people who care about their communities care about their schools and and you have to you have to care if you're a teacher because you don't get paid we know that well with that said I, I i'm very positive of this holiday season a couple of days it's christmas i want you guys to if you don't watch a video again uh sad or sunday i think i am posting one have a great day man whatever holiday whatever you celebrate celebrate it please my best wishes to you and your family and I mean that from my heart. I don't want to see anybody have a bad Christmas. I don't want to see anybody have a bad Hanukkah or Christmas or whatever you celebrate. Celebrate it. I am the most non-woke person. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I'm just fucking Larry. And uh, I really want to wish you a Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Happy Holidays. And, I, you know, I'm not going to be politically correct. It is what it is. And uh, make sure you just hug the people you love. That's all I'm going to say. And 
On that note, Xavier Babuda, you can change. I hope you do change. Uh, and I hope you become the Joe Sample of 10 years from now, 15 years from now. And for Joe Sample, way to go. Merry Christmas. You did great things for Iowa. I wish you could bring it around the world, around the country at least. It's not easy, and I know this. Uh, I know you, and, and, and you're a good man. Your heart's in the right place. And and I think you did a lot of good for a lot of people. And I, and I think you should take that to the bank. That's what's important in this world. Have a great day, everybody. Please stay safe and make good choices.